Good. Be sure to show that to Greg and she's going to say, well, I'm not going to let you go live again. I figured I'd put it on YouTube. What do you think? All right. All right. All right. Nice question. question. <laughs> Did you say a pipeline originates on your property? Yes. That's correct. I don't yes. understand what, 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 what does that mean? Why does that happen? Why is that and what is it? Okay. Well, the pipeline, it originates with... You've probably heard of this company, Southern Natural Gas. It has a pipeline that runs through Swanee County. I've got it on my property. Oh, there you go. All right, well, this Southern Natural Gas pipeline comes in from the west, turns north on my property, goes to the next county. There's a whole other story about that from 2014 when that one broke. But, uh, okay, Atlanta Gaslight wanted a pipeline to go to, they told my father, Moody, Air Force Base. So they had to get the gas from somewhere. They made a deal with Southern Natural Gas to get the gas from them. So then they came to my father and said, you know, we're going to pay you this much for a right of way and put a gas station on there for stepping down. And uh, he says, no, you're not. Well, eventually they asked why. He said, well, you don't have time to do eminent domain, so you'll pay what I ask, which they did. But that doesn't really matter because they paid a flat fee in perpetuity, forever. And they, you know, we continue paying the taxes. That's the way these pipelines work. It's the same way for all the easements that people sign for Sable Trail. Uh, does that help explain how the pipeline got there? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right, so the Georgia Public Service Commission finally came out with a report about that Homerdale explosion um, Monday. Oh, that's Published it, they, they signed it Friday, they sent it to us Monday. And they're not buying the pipeline company's excuses. They're saying, your contractor didn't do this, didn't do that. Everything from the, um, the sewer line, they were supposed to mark, locate and mark the sewer line, they didn't. The old equipment that the pipeline company had in the coffee shop, they did, did not locate or mark that. And even after, um, there, there were a number of small fines proposed for that. Another couple was, uh, they didn't do any mandatory drug testing of the of personnel after the explosion, nor alcohol testing. So those were all four small fines. The big one, more than $2 million, is even after the explosion, they did not follow their own corporate procedures and do an investigation as to the causes. Now, for comparison, the last time Georgia PSC fined this company, the fine was $10,000. This one's more than $2 million. Now, that's small potatoes compared to a uh, southern company paid $4 billion for this company, but it's big compared to the previous fines. So we hope it does some good. And, you know, some, that part about failed to follow their own corporate procedures, um, Spectra Energy, the company behind Sable Trail, they're no different. FEMSA, the Do Nothing National Agency, actually finds Spectra for the same thing. Um, I wasn't really going to go into this, but you asked. <laughs> yes. Where does the actual uh, gas well come from? You know, where, is it, where does it originate? Um, well, there's a number of places that the gas tends to come from. And these days, it pretty much all comes from fracking. Fracking. Yeah, that's not good. Which is where they uh, dig deep into the ground, they go sideways to get where they want, and they force liquids in there to force the gas out. Mm -hmm. Order the liquids? We don't know. They're trade secret. They claim they never leak back up. Just like Sable Trail claimed there was no danger digging under the Somani River and one year to the month later I was flying over to the Withagoochee of Georgia and saw their boom in the river where just their pilot hole, before they built, dug the big one, the pilot hole had leaked drilling fluid up into the river. So where it's most likely coming from is the Marcellus Shale in Pennsylvania. There's a chain of pipelines, you'll love these names, the Atlantic Sunrise Pipeline that connects to Transco, Transcontinental Pipeline, which connects to Stable Trail, amongst others. Southern Natural Gas 
has different connections. I'd have to actually look up to see where their most likely source of gas is, but the Marcellus Shale produces by far the biggest amount of so-called natural gas these days. Does that answer your question? And that's Pennsylvania, right? Yes. Yes, there used to be fracking in New York State, but New York State wised up and banned it. They did that because of local opposition, because of lots of counties and cities voting bads until the state finally had to pay attention. Just like what's being proposed, attempted here in Florida. Yeah. So we need to stay on top of that, ladies, about the banning and fracking in our state. Because if you don't, if you just let it go one time, somebody else will get into the can. There's a, currently a bill that would ban two out of three kinds of fracking, but it needs to ban all three. So you all might want to be lobbying your state legislatures to say, we want all three. The Florida Department, the uh, Commissioner of Agriculture recently put out her own request to ban all three. You all might want to back her. Oh, I better move along. Okay, so actually, it turns out, when we got the rest of December, Valdosta spilled more in December of last year than all of the previous year. Okay, and we uh, collect all this stuff. We keep uh, daily differences so we can easily notice. Okay, and we still need Georgia EPD to do the other things that were requested, do sign up for email alerts like Florida already does. How about a map of the last 30 days? Like, Florida already does it. Oh, hey, how about we find some offenders? We're talking about sewage again, with this, this transition. And how do we get spills to fix their infrastructure? Um, and how about if they do water quality testing? Because they're the cause of the problem. How about they help us find out how far it goes? Um, and which wells are affected? As you may know, the 12 downstream counties have banded together in what they call a rivers task force. And in fact, they are meeting next Wednesday, April 10th, in Valdosta with the city of Valdosta. First time ever elected officials to elected officials across state lines doing that. And I'm told the public will have an opportunity to speak in case you want to come and say a few words. We will be videoing it. Now, a lot of people are fixated on Valdosta, and it's easy to understand why, but it's not just Valdosta. Valdosta did do weekly testing, and the result is there's often stuff getting into the rivers when there were no spills. There's stuff causing E. coli spikes upstream from Valdosta. There's also sometimes E. coli spikes at the state line when there was nothing between their wastewater plant and there. It's not just Valdosta. It's what else is it? Well, it could be horses, cows, cats and dogs, bad septic tanks. We need more testing to find out. We, Walls, well, Swanee Riverkeeper, are doing volunteer <laughs> testing program. <laughs> no, look like you're falling asleep. <laughs> but it'd be great if uh, states were doing more of this. And it's not even just that. There's also these firefighting chemicals. You may have heard of the big spill down in Kala where uh, the local uh, health department tested and then had to close some wells and divide water. Well, there's, uh, this, this stuff has also come from Moody Air Force Base upstream. And they didn't test any local wells. Still trying to get Moody to have a meeting about that. OK, so I'm sure that was an excellent picture. Basically, everything depends on water. So shouldn't the states be doing more about this? It's a public health and economic issue. The public health, I hope, is obvious by now. The economic issue is something that Valdosta doesn't get, and doesn't, mostly doesn't seem to want to get about the Florida counties. As they keep saying in their task force meetings, they've invested a lot of time and money and effort into ecotourism on these rivers. Okay, the stigma of these spills is going to remain unless there is regular frequent testing so we know when the rivers are safe and when they're not. So we need that to happen. And please contact your state and federal legislators about this, about fracking. Um, and uh, by the way, all the water keepers of Florida are now banded together in an organization called Water Keepers Florida. We'll be meeting 
April 15th in Orlando with FDEP. Uh, that's testing's the main thing I want to talk about. Y'all got any things you want to talk about? Let us know. Okay. I'm almost done. Almost done. Don't forget phosphate mines. And don't forget Sable Trail, FERC, and liquid natural gas export. Some of that Sable Trail gas is going at least as far as Puerto Rico through Jacksonville. Some of it is probably going down to Miami and being exported to countries in the Caribbean as a, as a facility in Hialeah that's definitely sending gas to the Caribbean. And John, you, need, you need to tell them what LNG is because it's so bad and nobody knows what it is. Liquid natural gas. It's they in, it's press in it. trucks on the road. We were riding behind them uh -huh. on the highway. And they're very volatile. The, the same company, AGL, owns an outfit called Pivotal LNG, Pivotal Liquid Natural Gas, which has three liquefaction facilities in Georgia. They send it by truck down 75 and I-10 to Jacksonville. So when you see LNG on the side, that's what it is? Yep. Yes. Okay. I have a question. Sure. You said that they, they outlawed or wouldn't do fracking in New York. Is that correct? Right. They banned fracking in New York. New York okay. State. Do they still have gas? They do. And in fact, the same company, Spectra Energy, built a pipeline through New Jersey into Manhattan. So, have they banned pipelines? No. There's also a, a Spectra pipeline that goes within a few thousand feet of a nuclear plant. Okay. Well, now, if these pipelines, they all are saying, saying negative about it, where does that leave us? What is that gas used for? Is what? it not used to heat? Pumps and make our gas range work. Yes, and, 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 and so you don't want to do this. So how are you going to do it without well, gas? Well, the gas is how it got there. Fracking is such a different way to get it. Well, I'm not just talking about fracking. She's talking about the other end now. Yes. What do they use it for? In the Northeast, a lot of it goes to heating. Yes. And um, there's some companies using it to power vehicles now. And one of the excuses for gas going to Jacksonville is to power ships. Okay, you're wondering, okay, what should we do instead? Um, solar power, that's what we should do instead. It's curious how both FPL and Duke, shortly after Sable Trail went operational, suddenly started building solar farms all over Florida. Duke had been doing this in North and South Carolina for years. Um, and you know, currently a lot of people say, well, it's still a small percentage, like one or two percent of the power mix but it's doubling every two years. Take yourself a chessboard, put a penny on the first one, two on the second one, four, eight, sixteen, see how fast before you're in millions. If it continues doubling at the current rate, it's actually slowed down a little bit due to the current administration, but even that didn't stop it. If it continues at approximating the current rate, by the year 2023, more electricity in this country will come from solar power than anything else. And it won't be many years after that until we can run everything on sun, wind, and battery power. Batteries are coming along much faster. They're cheaper and being manufactured faster than anybody predicted. Now, um, heating obviously can do with electricity. And Transportation, electric cars are rapidly taking over the market. There's a fellow named Mark Z. Jacobson, a professor out of Stanford, who can tell you all the details. He's worked this out, how to power literally everything. Um, I have a question about automobiles. Uh, yes? Battery powered. Um, what, where is the source for the uh, electricity to, to recharge the batteries come from? Well, um, there's no reason we can't do it from solar power. I have an a electric golf cart. I power it using my 15 kilowatts of solar panels on my farm workshop. Right. Mm -hmm. So we'll get fuel way down the road. <laughs> That's a free fuel, isn't it? Yes, which is why utilities don't like it. Right. They make a lot of their profit off of selling fuel. If there's no fuel, yes? I just wondered how it could be practical to outlaw like, the use of gas when you've got so many people, especially middle income people and, and poor, whose homes are set up, they're cooking, they're 
heating, all these things are set up with gas. I can't replace all those appliances and all of the um, methods of heating and things like that. Nobody's outlawed that. No, I'm just saying if they're running on gas now and you get rid of gas and go, I mean, I know that the long term concept is to get rid of it and go to solar. Mm -hmm. All right, but you can't replace all these things. People won't have the money to make that switch. The, the money exists. It exists in the profits. No, the they, money in a household to go replace my stove, replace my heating system, <laughs> replace all these things. Yes, but this... Many people can't do that. The majority of people can't. I understand that. But the majority of people are also the same people that are suffering from the pollution, which is causing cancer and other problems. Uh, you know, why should the people who are at the end of the line there be responsible for paying for everything that's being caused by the big fossil fuel companies? There's less than 100 companies that have caused climate change. It's, you know, it's basically those 100 companies. It doesn't really matter what anybody else does unless we stop them. But, you know, and, you know if you don't want to talk about climate change, let's just talk about pollution. <laughs> and what you're talking about. Why shouldn't the companies that have caused these problems have to pay for the conversion? That's a well, simple one. It would be a big task all over the United States of America and every little town and every city. It is a big task. I have this suspicion that all the solar panels are made using fossil fuel, the manufacturing process. And you're presenting one facet of this issue. There are other matters here, too, really. They are currently possibly using fossil fuels, yes, because everything currently is using north, fossil fuels. The northern parts of the United States wouldn't do very well at this point with two solar panels. Massachusetts has more solar power than Florida does. Yeah, I know they have a lot of solar power, but... Germany is the world leader in solar power. The solar panels are not cheap. They're actually now less expensive than any other source of power and faster to build than a gas plant. They've gone down 40% in price since 2016. I hear a hint. <laughs> yes. Okay, so all the flyers is a list of upcoming events. Please come paddle with us or come to, for example, Florida Bolt Fest. And any other questions you've got, I'll be around for a while and feel free to send us mail calls up. Thank you, John. Now, uh, thank you, John, for speaking, and I know you could speak even longer, and maybe the next time we